This is a story about what happens when you have breast cancer, told in real time. So this update was scheduled to talk actually about how you're feeling and looking six weeks after getting your expanders removed and your implants put in. Yeah, well, everybody should know that implants were never on my bucket list. I never thought that's what I would do. I thought, you know, maybe if I had an extra 10K, 15K hanging around, I might get a boob lift one day (laughs) just because I've had kids and, you know, late 50s, right? And I'm getting used to the implants. Having the expanders out, oh my gosh, it's so nice. And I actually, this is probably TMI, but... I actually like looked down earlier this week and I went, oh my gosh, they look like boobs again. And I wasn't afraid to look at them because I would see the tumor. Because for the first seven months that I knew I had cancer, I could see the tumor. So I wouldn't look. And now I'm looking and I'm like, oh, they're like boobs. (laughs) They're really good. I mean, there's no more Franken boobs. And Dr. Pacella did such an incredible job. He had so much work to do. And the left one actually was where the cancer wasn't. He was able to make it so that there's barely a scar that you can see anymore. It doesn't go across the center like the one on the right. And that has to do with radiation and the way that the, the skin had, uh, had moved during radiation knew what he was doing. He could see the vision even when we couldn't. Yeah, he so good. I feel 90% healed. I still feel a lot of like the nerves are reconnecting and the skin on the, like where the radiation was, it doesn't look thinner, but it still is really, really sensitive. And when I turn on my side, I can still feel the skin pulling a little bit, getting used to the the implants. I may have mentioned this before, but I feel like between having the scan that came up with no evidence of disease and having these expanders out and now moving, I can see my way through this finally. Even though I'm like crying about my feet hurting and crying about the mobility pieces, I can still see a way out. And when I realized that this wasn't like an ACL surgery where I'd have the surgery done, you know, rehab it and everything was going to be fine. Like I, once I realized I wasn't going to be the same person again, (laughs) I mean, I really, I really thought, all right, 2021, bust my body down with the chemo and the surgeries and the radiation in 2022, I'll build it back up. Right. It just, it sounds really good on paper, but it's not quite that easy. It clicked finally for me a few weeks ago. I was like, oh, I don't have cancer anymore. I don't have any more long term treatments. I have another surgery with Dr. Pachella, but what we're doing then is it's after everything is settled, just kind of fine tuning it. And I don't have to do that. Right. Right. To survive. So that's all super exciting. What questions do you have for me about all this? You've watched me go through this ad nauseum. (laughs) Are you just walking around without a bra on all the time now? Not yet. Yeah. I'm still wearing one for support. But so, is it your plan to just go without a bra? If I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I... Now, what I'll say is that because there's weight behind these, these aren't like an almost A or a B. They're probably a very full C. So because of that, in order to keep the skin from sagging early and all of that, I probably need to wear a bra. I did wear one for six weeks at night. And when they told she told me I didn't have to wear any one at night anymore, I was like, oh. And it was just to support where the scars were healing and and all of that. So the whole question now is nipples. What do you do about nipples, right? Good question, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I kind of think I don't want to get any skin protrusions put on because if I wanted to go without a bra, I could. 
And not that you can't when you have, you know, nipples, but it's just kind of like, I think I spent the most of my life in the workplace trying to wear a padded bra to keep those from my headlights, my beam, high beams from showing. <laughs> so I thought about tattoos, like traditional areolas. I've also thought about doing something kind of pretty, but not overdone. I don't need a whole chest tattoo or anything. And that's fine for whoever wants it. But I, I don't feel like I want to cover, I have any scars I want to cover. I think it would be be more like something pretty. Yeah. The tattoos are amazing. Oh oh my gosh. That we've been sending back and forth. Just, they look so real. I don't know why you would go through some weird surgery to get fake nipples made when you can just do that. That Same. Well, and the thing is that (laughs) you might want to cut this out. I don't know. Is that part of the purpose of nipples for me was that they had some kind of sensation. I don't have any sensation. Like they're not going to put nipples on to make me feel anything. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's no sexual pleasure or anything like that from them. That's one of their purposes. And if right. you can't. Right. And I had both of them taken off because I think Dr. Pacella had mentioned it's kind of, it would be hard. It'd be harder to match it like the one that was okay. And the other piece to me is I found that damn cancer on my nipple. I'll be damned if I was going to have any more nipple tissue. Right. So. So the theme of this conversation seems to be around adjusting to all these body changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep changing and went back to work last week, Mm -hmm. which is great. Like I'm so happy to see you with a purpose every day. Yeah. And I think that you, I mean, to me, you seem really happy Mm -hmm. now that you're back with Sammy. Mm -hmm. I was afraid last week though. Like last week I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. And I think part of it is the stamina. I just have not had the stamina. And so I just started trying to do more things to gain more stamina, more like walks up hills and stuff like that later last week. And I can pick him up again. Like there is so much to be said for hugging a two-year-old like that. But he literally runs to me, Kristen, Kristen, Kristen. Like, how is that not lifting me up? And I am tired for sure. I feel so much weight has been lifted. I don't know, no pun intended on the expanders, but... I feel, I feel like a weight's been lifted and Sammy's turned a corner too. While I was gone, his grandmother was there hanging out with him. And I think she was more hardcore on the potty training than Crystal and I were together. And so he's done. (laughs) He's done. And just this week, he decided he wasn't going to sleep in his crib anymore. And they took the front piece of the crib off and he's going to be two and a half. He's just turned a corner to where we can have a conversation sometimes about things. And he's been very much a baby. And now he's a toddler. And I get to use my education specialist stuff more and get to interact a lot, a lot more on that from that piece. The thing too is that people don't really know this. You and I did a lot of really good work while I was off with the podcast conference and moving a lot of things forward with the podcast and getting the feedback that we have gotten recently. It's heavy on my heart how many people suffer from breast cancer. I don't want to say suffer from it, but how many people are diagnosed and the road that they have to go down. And then also how helpless the people who are around them feel. It's been really, really heavy on my heart. And I think I see a roadmap on how to help people. I don't know what it really looks like. I mean, I don't, I don't know the, what the road is, but I, I think that the gift that you came up with when starting this podcast and that we have been able to, to put out there, this is not about tooting our horn. This is about helping people not to feel alone. Some of the conversations I've had recently with high school friends who have been diagnosed and, and people who love them. I just get chills. Just yesterday, one of my friends oh, that yeah. I haven't talked to in years 
just messaged and said, I, I want to give Kristen a gift because he had gone through cancer himself and especially radiation. Mm-hmm. So it's not just reconnecting you with people. It's reconnecting me with people too. Yeah. Yeah. And how generous was that? And there's people that I have been interacting with on Facebook groups and on other podcasts who we've become friends. There's someone here, shout out Annette, that I'm going to go have coffee with in a couple of weeks who lives here in in San Diego. And she uh, has Dr. Coca and Dr. Rivera. And she had some pretty serious, very serious radiation burns. And we were able to have conversations through that. And several people that I have met in person who have reached out to me and have become friends. And it's a gift to be able to to have those people in my life. Anyone who's been listening to us for a little while might remember that a while back we asked if anyone wanted to tell their story. And we had a very specific type of person in mind for that. And so it's probably as good of a time as any to say that we've been recording with our season two story now for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And that story is going to be incredible. Right. Yeah. Can I say your name? Yes. (laughs) Natasha. She wrote to us and gave me some quick information. And I got on a Zoom call with her and immediately fell in love with her. She has a British accent. So how can you not, first of all? And she was a palliative care nurse. She still is. I'm sorry. (laughs) She's a smart ass. And also she's really smart. And she just knows things from two angles. You know, she doesn't just know them from being the patient now, but she knows them as someone who's cared for the patient for a very long time. So Absolutely. It's been really wonderful. I hate that she has cancer and that that's how we connected. But she lives up in the Bay Area and it's all I can do not to just fly up there and go to sit and put her chemo. I mean, maybe I'll do it. You know, it it could still happen. So before her story actually starts, you'll hear her on a couple episodes. One with the author of a book that we all are reading. That book is called Healing by Teresa Brown. Mm -hmm. And then Natasha is also joining us on another episode with Dr. Aaron Fritz about getting a port put in and what that's all about. So you'll start to hear from her and really exciting. So exciting. Yeah. She was the person who told me that nurses were listening to the podcast. And it was actually some people that she worked with when they found out that she had cancer that told her to listen to the podcast. And she went and found us. Just going to apologize for my voice today because you know in Austin when caterpillars all come off the trees, they're not real caterpillars. Right. Yeah. I There's like talking. a crust of pollen on my car. Oh, it's the green crust. The green crust is here. Oh. It's that time. I went out this morning and I tried to clean off the deck and I really, it was a very bad idea. I can hear it in your throat. I, think I inhaled a bunch of it. So. Oh, that's, that's the worst. Yeah, it really, truly is. So yeah, season two with Natasha is so good. So good. In fact, it's funny because I think I keep thinking like, how are people learning anything from us? (laughs) 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 Because again, she's a smart ass. She's so real and she's so dang smart. And the life that she's lived is so interesting as well. Yeah, we're lucky to have her. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you haven't heard the trailer yet and haven't met Natasha, go back and listen to the trailer. And then uh, she'll join us when we talk to Dr. Fritz about port placement. And it sounds really boring, but it was actually a really fascinating conversation. Really, Yeah, it really is. For those of you who aren't sure what port placement is, it's, it's basically when you have chemo, that's where the chemo goes in. So yeah, and I will be moved. Probably by the time next time that you and I have a conversation, because I kind of feel like, knock on wood, I kind of feel like my story's over. God, I hope so. <laughs> Are you guys done with me yet or what? We didn't think it was going to go this far. 
we just kind of thought, okay, here's some, here's some things. She's going to get better. She's not going to whine about her feet. You know, she's not going to move. Like she's going to stay put. But next week on the podcast, another foot update. Yeah. <laughs> you can't take another foot update. <laughs> no, that's all you're going to get from now on is updates on Kristen's feet. So it's going to be a big day when my chemo toenails fall off because that's still in progress. I'll be honest. Who wants to do a pool? What day will Kristen <laughs> fall off? Leave a review on Apple Podcasts with the date that you think <laughs> <laughs> the the toenails will come off and whoever is closest, I will personally come buy you a pedicure. <laughs> Love it. I think we actually will talk probably after the, the fat transfer and like the perfection of the boo-boos, but... Well, you haven't made a decision about tattoos, so we're going to have to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And we'll have some really smart and wonderful tattoo artists on to talk about that process too and what that looks like. So that's coming. Yes, absolutely. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. <gasps> our newsletter. So <laughs> excited. <laughs> I'm a nerd. On the uh, newsletter page at breastcancerstoriespodcast.com. And uh, we promise not to spam you. You will get all kinds of great resources from us. Remember, just click the button and we got you. Yes, more snark in your inbox. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Breast Cancer Stories. To continue telling this story and helping others, we need your help. All podcasts require resources and we have a team of people who produce it. There's costs involved and it takes time. If you believe in what we're doing and have the means to support the show, you can make a one-time donation or you can set up a recurring donation in any amount through the PayPal link on our website at breastcancerstoriespodcast.com slash donate. To get the key takeaways from each episode, links to anything we've talked about and promo codes or giveaways from our partners, sign up for our email newsletter. If you've been listening to us for a while, you know we are cynical Gen Xers who approach everything with a healthy dose of skepticism. So you can also expect that from us in our newsletter. You'll get notes and thoughts from me related to each episode and links to the most useful resources for all the breast cancer things. So if you have chemo brain, you'll be able to just go read your email, find anything we talked about on the podcast without having to remember it. The link to sign up is in your show notes and on the newsletter page at breastcancerstoriespodcast.com. We promise not to annoy you with too many emails. Thanks for listening to Breast Cancer Stories. There's a link in the show notes with all of the resources mentioned on this episode and more info about how you can donate. If you're facing a breast cancer diagnosis and you want to tell your story on the podcast, send an email to hello at theaxis.io. I'm Eva Shea, your host and executive producer. Production support for the show comes from Mary Ellen Clarkson, and our engineer is Daniel Cruiser. Breast Cancer Stories is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.